Hey there, in this video, I'm gonna be going over how to get proper exposure in the Canon R5C using the built-in monitoring assist tools like waveform and false color. There'll be a lot of tips in this video if you are shooting on the R5C or any other Canon cinema camera or any other cinema camera or actually any other camera. <laughs> if your camera doesn't have those built-in tools like waveform and false color, you can always use an external monitor. Like this is the Atomos Ninja V. Most people have one of these kicking around. If you don't have one of these, pretty much any monitor will work. Most of them nowadays have false color and waveform built in. Now, before we get into that, I just have to say that this is just how I have been using these tools. There's a lot of different approaches to this, but I'm sure as you watch this, you'll be curious to see how I do it, but also maybe you'll pick up some tips that might be helpful for you. So before we get into all that, I just wanna say I've been using the battery grip a lot on the R5C because it doubles the battery life because it holds two batteries. And I will be doing a rig video eventually. I'm just waiting for some parts to come in. So if you're curious about that, please consider hitting subscribe down below. It'd be greatly appreciated. There'll be other content coming up about a lot of nerdy camera stuff, but also videography and content creation. And of course, I'll leave a link to the, uh, the battery grip down below too. Before we get outside and start shooting and demonstrating these exposure techniques, I wanna show you where some of the stuff is in the camera so you know where it is and also some settings and stuff like that. So let's dive into the menu. So you press the menu button and then if we go over to the suitcase or briefcase, we go down to uh, tab number seven and make sure you have the view assist turned on. What this is, is a LUT that's built into the camera that applies over the C-Log3 footage. We're we'll gonna be shooting in C-Log3. So you can see a 709 image on the LCD screen. It's super handy. I found it to be very accurate and trustworthy. And I definitely recommend that ha putting that on there because it'll look a lot better and you'll have a better sense of what the image is gonna look like. You can't load a custom LUT, but as I said, this one is pretty good. Also, you can change the view assist to be over HDMI or not. So today I'm gonna be recording on the Ninja V, so I want that on. So again, if you're using an external monitor, where maybe you can't load LUTs into or you want to use the one built into the camera, you have that option there. So we're going to be using false color, as I said. So what I want to show you here is if you go to the next tab over, which is the exposure one, and we go down to number four, you'll see the false color index at the bottom. Now, false color is you're going to see a bunch of colors on the screen, and sometimes you forget what those colors mean. So what you can do is you can go in here and you can see the little chart, and this shows you what each color represents. So just in case you forget, it's, it's in the menu system. So there's some other stuff here in the main screen that I wanna show you. So over here, if you press this little exposure button, you can turn a lot of things on and off. You can turn peaking on and off. You can turn the waveform on and off, zebras, false color, and the view assist. So that's another place you can turn view assist on and off. In addition to that, there's some custom buttons that I wanna show you that I've set. So over here, custom button six, I've set that to be false color. So I use these all the time. That's why I set custom buttons. And custom button number, Five, I set to be the waveform toggling that on and off. So there you go. So that's pretty much all the stuff we need to do to get going. And I just want to make sure you knew where they were in the camera. Let's get outside and I'll show you how to set some exposure. Now here we are outside with a high dynamic range situation. We have the bright sky in the background. We have our flowers as our subject and we have the dark shadows in the background there. So let's do our exposure here. Let's say we want to shoot this wide open. So what we're going to do here is open up the aperture to 2.8 and then we'll use our ND filter to adjust the exposure here and making sure that we are below 100 and you can see there that we're just below 100 with the most amount of ND so let's now check the wave uh, turn off the waveform check the false color you can see I don't see any yellow or red but let me open up the ND putting less ND on there making the exposure brighter and you can see the sky turns yellow and then turns red obviously that means we're overexposed so if we dial that back we want we want to be like just past it so i just push it a little bit further and again we can go back and check the waveform and you can see that it's a little bit over 100 percent. so we're going to dial that back even more just to make sure we protect those highlights so with that we should be all good that's uh, getting proper exposure using um, false color and waveform. Another example outside this one, of course, I have a person in the shot, me. <laughs> also, this is how I would do this if I was filming myself. So let's go through this. Again, we wanna pick our aperture. So we're at F4 right now. Let's say we wanna open this up to 2.8 and we can see on the waveform that I'm a little high, so let's bring down the ND to darken the exposure a little bit. And it looks like I'm right around 100, so I'm gonna stop down maybe a third, 
two thirds of a stop just to make sure I'm really protecting the highlights. I do not want to lose those. So there we go there. And then now let's check this with the false color. And so I don't see any red. I'm really looking back here, but I can just show you here if I pull down the ND to brighten the exposure, you can see we're starting to get some red behind me and also on my hand there. So again, pull this down to where you don't see any yellow and then a little bit further. And then what I'll do is turn this off as you can see. So that's how I would expose this image uh, outside using false color and waveform. All right, <laughs> back inside. It is quite toasty out there today. Now let's talk about exposure in a controlled lighting situation. So here I'm using studio lights and this scene here, I don't have a lot of dynamic range. So I'm not gonna be using those tools to protect the highlights. I'm gonna try to go for the correct exposure right in the camera using the false color and a gray card. Now for this situation here, you wanna pick your aperture, of course the ISO and the, um, the shutter angle is not gonna change. So here let's, let's go with F4. Let's say we want F4 for the shot. And so what we're gonna be using is gonna be the key light to control the exposure. I'm not using an ND filter on it right now because I don't need it for this scene. There are some situations where you're shooting inside where you might want an ND filter. For example, if there's a window in the background and you wanna not blow out the window and you wanna make sure the subject is bright enough, you're gonna to have to add a lot of key light on there and you might have to ND down a little bit, of course, depending on your um, aperture and all that stuff. But anyways, so here, uh, the first thing I wanna do is I want to get the white balance correct. So I had it set at 5600 Kelvin when I was outside, of course, middle of the day. So let me show you how to do that in, this, in the camera here using a gray card. Now, these are super handy. If you don't have one of these, they're not expensive. I'll leave a link down below for you to pick one up. I probably need to get a new one. This one's getting, getting kind of beat up, but let me show you how to do this. There's two ways to do this. One is you can go in through the function button, which is number 11 right next to the shutter. Or what you can do is just touch the screen and we're gonna change this to custom setting A. And then we're gonna hold up our gray card, sort of where the, where the subject would be and we're gonna press the 13 button, which is all the way on the left side. And that will give us a custom white balance. There you go, there's a custom white balance. All right, so now let's go through and do the, uh, the exposure. And for this, I'm gonna turn the false color on. And we're gonna use the gray card. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there's that chart that we're gonna to use to determine that. And green is what we're looking for on our middle gray. So we have our gray card here. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use the key light here, which I have a remote for, and I'm gonna raise the exposure until I get green on my middle gray. So there you go. And you can see if I overexpose, right? Bring it back down. That's probably the right exposure right there. Super easy with the gray card and the false color with the R5C to get the proper exposure. Well, as you can see, it's pretty easy and straightforward to get proper exposure on the R5C using those built-in monitoring assist tools like waveform and false color. If your camera has those, that's awesome. If not, remember, you can use an external monitor to get that done. Now, if you found this video helpful and you enjoyed it, please consider hitting subscribe down below. It'd be greatly appreciated. If you're curious about color grading and how I did my, I do my quick color grades, I might make a video about that, so let me know in the comments down below. If you're curious about how to use a color checker to get very, very accurate color grades, please check out this video right here here where I go through that in detail. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next one.